Hi guys, wanted to share a quick little video update on one of the cool new features found in Fusion 360. They released a new update for October and introduced configurations into the design space. Configurations are a great way to be able to make variations on a file and to very quickly update a template file to have many different variations or configurations at the few touches of a button and they have really streamlined the process. And I wanted to show you guys how you can apply this new feature uh, in your OMP workflows using some of the templates that we've previously built inside some of our coursework. So just to give you a quick little demo today, we're going to hop into Fusion 360, a cosmetic cover template, one of the templates that we make in our course. This is a BK design uh, with the flowing lines, sort of medial, lateral, posterior, anterior trim lines. Uh, we've got a matchable bottom with a flange for printing, and we have spiralized ribs on the inside to grip the pylon while also providing sort of a very forgiving interior space so that they will bend out of the way or curl out of the way in the event of any weird clipping. So a nice design, good template. We want to be able to quickly change this per patient um, by modifying key dimensions. Previously, what we had to do is we'd actually have to go back into the, the features inside our history timeline, find the sketch we wanted to work on, hit edit sketch, go into this sketch and change some of the values and move things around and then hit finish sketch and watch it update again. Now, although this can work, it is a com it is rather cumbersome and it requires a decent knowledge of how the file was built and structured, making the process less repeatable for new people, for new uh, users who haven't actually built the file or used it before. So configurations allows you to get very top level access without diving into the details like this, uh, like I just showed you. So. In order to enter the configurations workspace, we're going to hop over into the display configuration table or configure. When you configure something, it's actually going to change the file type and they're going to give you a little uh, pop-up to state that. Uh, it will save itself out if you haven't used configurations before. It is a new feature, so this will happen for the first little bit here until all future file types can afford this new workflow. But essentially, a configuration table is now available. And it's highlighting in blue all the different things that we can affect with this configuration. And you can affect almost anything. If I go and click on this, I can see that I can affect the suppression, the physical material, the appearance, or the visibility of this component as a variable in my first configuration. If we go into any of these features here, Sketch 1, you notice Sketch 1 has the linear dimension D1. It also has suppression and visibility. I can toggle all of these things off between configurations, which makes it really interesting. Starting off, I know that D1 is going to be one of the most important dimensions. D1 was the height, and that is something that I will want to configure. So if I check D1 from this sketch dimension, you know, what's available to be configured is in blue. We now have D1 as a variable that we can affect inside this table. So to make this a little easier, you can also go into the parameters button, uh, the parameters tables here, and you can actually go into this before starting and actually name all of these special dimensions. So linear dimension two is named D1. Well, I can change this to device height. And now that will be a much easier thing to find and to uh, label as configured. Um, if we go into the next sketch, the diameter at the top is also going to be something that we should try and configure. So I'm going to say D3 is, uh, you know, the upper diameter, I'm going to give that a name. And this is just again, to help us find these di dimensions in our sketches that we've put together um, and be able to call upon them when we want to go and create a configuration. Um, so going through the rest of these, the shell command is our wall thickness. So maybe this one can be our wall thickness. Um, and I can't have a space in the name. That's why it's red. Let's try wall thickness. And then when we get to the uh, ribbing, I think one of the important ones is to find where the thickness of the ribs is and to give that a name as well. Um, so if I star that one, it's going to show up at the top. If I'm going to star this one, it'll show up at the top. Anything I've given a name to, let's bring those up to the top of our parameters page. So, you know, that used to be where you could go and quickly update the table with uh, features and, and dimensional changes nice and fast. But in the configuration tab, it's just a little bit easier. So if we want to bring the configuration now to all of those features, let's, um, change. let's go into the parameters window here and let's check off all of the ones that we just labeled as being important and gave a name um, using our parameters window, right? So this configuration now has device height, upper diameter, 
a wall thickness and a rib thickness as variables that we can start to play with um, when we want to program in different versions of this. So I'm going to add a new configuration now. And configuration two is going to carry over all of the different uh, variables from the first that we ascribed. And now in configuration two, let's go and change some of these values. So let's change our device height to 300 millimeters tall. I'm going to think for a second. Let's change our upper diameter to, you know, 130. Our wall thickness, maybe we're printing in TPU and we want a wall thickness of four. So that one's going to have a slightly larger wall thickness and the rib thickness I'm going to leave at two. All right, so that was really easy to, to, to program in with that. We have two configurations in the same file that have uh, all of our values called out for ourselves. Um, one of the other ones that we can look at, so D54 is how we affect the calf shape. And whether or not to make that stronger or or more shallow, depending on what we what we need, right? So why don't we go back into the effects table? Let's go find D54. There it is. We're gonna give this uh, a call out too, and let's um, give this a name of the calf angle. Calf angle now can be updated. So in configuration two, what happens if we change that to 110? So just like that, we have now two configurations uh, using some of these. Uh, these these variables. And it's that easy now to go in and make different variables and variations of this design. So we can make a shorter one now, <laughs> a very short one. But notice how everything updates, right? And we're, we're able to change everything about this nice and quickly. Uh, so maybe make this a little bit taller. We'll make the upper diameter something much larger. Say this is a different morphology. Right? And then we can change the calf angle to something a little uh, less affording. So maybe 40 or so 90 degrees. There we go. So maybe that's a stockier version uh, for a very small pylon. But just like that, that's how easy it is to take a template and to change its configurations to suit different patient needs or to just different configurations that you want to drop into other uh, work. So configuration one, see, now sits inside this template as the first configuration using those values. Configuration two, same thing. We have all of these configurations saved within the template itself. And we can actually call upon these configurations inside another file. Save now. This is going to save a new design, a new configured design. And configurations can now be called upon in other assemblies. Let's look at another example where we're going to take the other template that we make in this Cosmesis course, which is for a C leg or an AK cover. And let's try and create some configurations for this design based on some of the main key measurements that we're going to need to derive this to make different variations for different patients. So again, we're going to go through and we're going to go step by step trying to find some of the things in this command tree that we're going to want to use to manipulate some of the key features here. And I've had them labeled before in the course uh, on the outside so that you can go in and immediately hop in and change certain dimensions on the fly to make a variation. But again, once you uh, want to pass this template along to someone else who's new to the process, having a configurated design is um, much easier and much easier to understand. So again, we're going to start off with this as our base configuration. Let's go into our parameters window and let's find some of the main dimensions that are driving this design that we're going to want to use. So looking at sketch one, this is our device height, top to bottom. Um, so I'm going to make sure I call that one out as device height. And the name is not valid again. Oh, I got to get better at this. Device height. Um, five inches, 100 millimeters. I think those are okay. Let's go down into sketch two. Um, if we want to validate some of these, we can hop in here or here. Um, I think one of the other ones we want is the shell thickness. So this is going to be our, our wall thickness. Uh, sketch 11, I believe, is where we're going to start to see some of the... Yes, so all of these mounting hardware points, you know, those are going to be things that we're going to want to change um, as well. So uh, the height from the knee to the um, uh, mounting point for the pylon... That is uh, this one, D32, so I can call this one, so like the uh, mounting puck height. 
Um, let's try another one. So 230 is the distance of the lower pins. So lower pin distance. And then D30, and then what was it, 120 for the next one. So the 120 is the upper pin distance. The linear dimension of three. So this is our wall thickness. So this is our magnet wall thickness. And then D24 is our magnet diameter. Or our pin diameter, depending on which ones. So let's try some of these. And uh, let's use some of these in our configurated window. So if I hit OK now, um, there is our, our first configuration. Let's go and add a new configuration and see if we can update some of these uh, features for ourselves nice and easily. Uh, which one is this? So this is a D31. Um, so we might want to have that one too, just to determine the puck thickness as well. But let's try, let's give this a shot. So what happens if we make this a larger cover? So let's do like a 290. Now again, because I'm sitting at the very end of my timeline, this is going to take a while because it's updating everything in the timeline. Um, so if you want, we can actually go back in time to sort of preview some of these designs. Uh, you know, as long as all of our dimensions are in uh, the build, we, you know, we could shave off, like, for example, this area here, which is generating the mounting. We can take that off. I don't think we need any of those generating for this next version. So uh, the lower pin distance of 230, um, why don't we try changing that to uh, 250? And this would be a bump out in response to some sort of reference. So think of a scan or a photo even. The upper pin distance, let's try making that 140. The magnet wall thickness, maybe we find out that we don't want to have full 3 millimeters. That's actually a bit overkill. So let's try 2 millimeters for the magnet wall thickness. And then afterwards too, we have different magnets we're trying. Um, we have half inch magnets as well. So let's go 0 0.5 inches for the magnet distance magnet diameter sorry of this next build and so there we go so this is an imperial version of you know a larger cover um, as a configuration so we have now to configuration two and then configuration one inside the same file and we can call upon these configurations uh, inside of other assemblies uh, which is really interesting so it's kind of like a version it's kind of like a save as a new file um, but it's not quite that. It's all taking place inside of the existing file itself. Uh, I forgot to add the height here. Let's try, uh, you know, three, six, 370. Let's make it a little taller. Unless that failed and I totally missed that. There we go. Perfect. So there's your, 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 your final version uh, for this design. So Really cool way to create a template, share a template, and have others drive the template. Uh, once you create a robust parameter um, that doesn't fail and that creates a consistent result, you can program it with a configuration table and send it off to different people to create their own configurations for their own patients. I hope this you guys can see the value of this kind of tool. Um, it's an exciting new addition to the Fusion 360 database. And uh, tune in next time for another hot tip and trick with O&P Digital Designer.